When you think of hell, do you think of a fiery landscape with erupting volcanoes, rivers of magma, and lakes of fire where damned souls scream in agony as scorching flames burn them to a crisp? If so, you're thinking specifically of the fourth layer of hell, Phlegathos. It is the center of bureaucracy for the lawful evil plane, and its rulers are the epitome of lust, seduction, and passion. Let's look at how each edition describes Phlegathos. In all editions, the geography of Phlegathos is the quintessential imagery of hell. A rocky wasteland filled with constant tremors, erupting volcanoes, and rivers and lakes of fire. In first edition, the rivers of fire are not lava, but liquefied fire, similar to that which can be found on the elemental plane of fire. In every other edition, it is just lava. First edition gives the most detail on the ongoings of the fourth layer of hell. Phlegathos is thought to be the most visited layer of hell besides Avernus, for magic users visit the famous Fire Falls of Phlegathos, where liquefied fire rivers fall from volcanic ridges down into clefts. The fire in such a spot is useful for creating many magic items such as flame tongue swords. Phlegathos has the most chaotic geography of any layer of hell, offering the most concealment, but also one of the most traveled. Archdevils will test servants by sending them here and giving them a task they must complete undetected, then having their barbed devil spies follow them and report on how they did. The vast, smoking plains surrounding the head volcano of Phlegathos are the domain of the vassals of Belial. The outlands, similar to Mineros, are lower and wetter than the interior of the lair, and populated by various lesser devils and methods. In 2nd edition, the lair is described as being as hot as the elemental plane of fire, so anyone who does not have fire immunity will die within seconds of arriving here. In 2nd edition, as well as 3rd and 5th edition, the flames of Phlegathos are sentient, seeking out and scorching any non-devil that is not authorized to be here. The Hamachula of Phlegathos are under strict orders to not negotiate with intruders. Gazra, the pit fiend ruler of Abrimok, has pretended to be an intruder who has offered the patrols of barb devils enticing deals to let her through, and harshly punish those who accepted. Because of this, the Hamachula are very intent on following their orders perfectly. Because of the malevolent flames and the strict police force that hates intruders, second edition states that few people travel here and so not much is known about the lair. This is the opposite of first edition where it is one of the most visited layers of hell. In third, fourth, and fifth edition, Phlegathos is the center of the Nine Hells' judicial system overseen by Belial. Contract disputes, accusations of cowardice in battle or dereliction of duty, and other criminal charges are resolved here in the diabolical courts. In 5th edition, Belial also oversees the process of devil promotion and demotion. Rulers In 1st edition, the one and only ruler is Belial. He is said to be the most handsome and diabolical in appearance out of all the devils. He is also the lord of pain and suffering. In 2nd edition, Phlegathos is co-ruled by Belial and his daughter Firna, although she is called Firana in 2nd edition. After the reckoning, Belial thought it was best for him to retreat from the spotlight and elevated his daughter to help him rule. It is rumored Fierna does little governing, instead spending her time lounging around in pools of magma, leaving the work to her pit fiend Gazra. This is a lie Fierna started so that other devils would underestimate her. She does spend her time in pools of magma, but does so with her father, discussing politics and planning stratagems. Fierna has a reputation of being volatile and quick to vengeance, and Belial has gotten skilled at focusing her rage. She has mastered the element of fire, casting all fire spells and spell-like abilities at peak proficiency. She is also immune to cold, and some believe she is mastering that element as well. Belial is a glib-tongued schemer, a trait that serves him well within Hell. He believes it's best to stay in the shadows and lets his daughter Fierna rule publicly. Many people think he is on the decline and assume Fierna will one day dispatch him and take sole rulership over Phlegathos. What they do not know is that Belial's power has only increased since his alliance with his daughter and that they are bound tightly by blood and politics. Belial hates Moloch and Garion, who were both deposed after the Reckoning. He also hates Mammon and thought he could easily conquer Stygia and Malbolge, and was disappointed when Levistus got lordship of Stygia, for he was a devil of the old school and a worthy opponent. Belial and Fierna sent one army to Stygia under Gazra's command, but it was completely decimated. Since then, he has tried to thwart Levistus politically whenever he can. 
In third edition, Phlegathos is officially ruled by Fierna, but Belial is the one truly ruling it from behind the scenes. Third edition states that after the reckoning, Belial got demoted, and that's why Fierna is the official ruler. However, this is a retcon because in second edition, that wasn't the case. They both ruled. The Book of Vile Darkness states, quote, Fierna has gained a reputation as an insatiable consumer of males with little care or discrimination. Her father is really no better, quenching his dark needs often with captives, slaves, or other devils. Some say that Fierna and Belial's relationship has been consummated in incestuous ways. End quote. Basically, they're an incestuous father-daughter power couple consisting of two super horny turbo rapists. According to the Book of Vile Darkness, Fierna has no interest in power or the politics of hell. She just wants to live a life of decadence and wealthy pleasure, and is perfectly fine with her father doing all the real work and simply does what he tells her to do. Belial has his sights set on conquering Stygia, and once Levisus is out of the way, taking Malbolge from the Hag Countess will be easy. In the Fiendish Codex 2, Malagar no longer rules Malbolge, and instead Glazia does. It says Fierna has been spending a lot of time with Glazia, and that Glazia urges Fierna to construct her own network of devils and cultists independent of her father's. Belial is worried Fierna wants to kill him and take over, so he spends most of his time scheming ways of spying on her with Without her noticing. Basically, in 2nd edition, people think their relationship is straining, and Fierna will soon overthrow her father, whose power is in decline. But in reality, their relationship is rock solid, they scheme together, and Belial's power is even greater than when he ruled solo. In 3rd edition, the rumors are correct, and Fierna is trying to gain independence, and Belial's power is dwindling. He's not even the official ruler of Phlegathos in 3rd edition. Personally, I think the second edition lore is more interesting. Fierna wanting to overthrow her father, whose power is weakening, is a very expected trope, and I like how in second edition, it is merely a rumor that they intentionally spread so their rivals underestimate them. It is a calculated lie in order to gain more power, the exact type of thing a devil would do. The third edition lore comes off as basic, lazy, and not the most devilish. Also, every devil alliance always ending and one betraying the other gets old. I want at least one partnership in hell that actually lasts, even if it is a weird, incestuous one. But th that's just my opinion. Let's get back to the official lore. In 4th edition, it is ruled by Fierna, but Belial helps from behind the scenes. Belial is trying to overthrow Levistus and take over Stygia, where Fierna instead courts the favor of Glazia. Basically the same stuff that was going on in 3rd edition, there's just a lot less detail because it's 4th edition. Belial is described as being the patron of secrets and seduction, while Fierna is described as being the patron of fire and pleasure. In 5th edition, it is back to being officially ruled by both Belial and Fierna, and they are described once again as having an unbreakable bond, but this time the reason for their willingness to work together is simply because their survival depends on it. Their relationship is paradoxical. Mortals think of them as mother and son, father and daughter, wife and husband, or ruler and consort, but none of those terms quite capture their relationship. Fierna is described as being the second most charismatic devil, the first being Asmodeus, and Belial leaves her in charge of gathering souls to meet their quota, while Belial focuses on the actual governing of the fourth layer of hell. They seem to hate and respect each other at the same time, frequently playing out schemes to overthrow the other. But the second a real threat approaches the powers of Phlegathos, they cooperate together perfectly to dispatch their shared enemy. I like to think that their scheming against one another is merely an act in order to make other devils think they're weaker than they really are. Vassals Naomi, consort to Belial. She is highly regarded for settling disputes and her bargaining ability. In battle, she uses her spells and long scimitar. She has a pleasant laugh and a good sense of humor. She is quick-witted and barely makes enemies. She resembles a short, burly, middle-aged female with long brown hair and cold, pale, blue-green eyes. Her face, shoulders, and hands have a human-like complexion, but the rest of her body is deep crimson. She looks quite human except for her tiny horns, gray hooves, and crimson forked tail. Camo legate to Belial, and wishes to usurp him one day. He knows every hiding place in Phlegathos, and possesses a plus one staff that negates all web spells, lock spells, hold spells, or any locks or bindings it can touch. The staff is capped with the skulls of 16 paladins he has killed, linked together with rings of brass. The skulls glow white whenever a creature of good alignment is within 9 feet of it. 
Kamo looks like a six foot tall, white haired, middle aged man with brown eyes. He has horns, black hooves, a forked tail, bat like wings, and scarlet skin that darkens to blue on his fingers. Zapan, a pit fiend who commands four companies of Mela branches that protect Belial and his palace. He also commands Belial's Orenyi's messengers and a kennel of hellhounds. In second edition, Zapan is a member of the Dark Eight. Zabos, Belial's pit fiend lieutenant who commands Belial's other vassals and, with the assistance of Kamo, deals with matters of diplomacy and intrigue within the Nine Hells. In second edition, he's also a member of the Dark Eight. Balan, a duke that commands 40 companies of bearded devils. He is cruel, aggressive, and violent, and disliked by almost every devil. He never backs down from a fight, and loves to fight opponents he considers weaker than himself. He appears as a 9 foot tall, yellow skinned humanoid with prominent eyebrows and tufts of beard. He had flaming red eyes, scarlet skin, and gray hooves. Twin rows of spikes ran down from his wrist to his elbows, covered in a rash inducing poison. Once you are poisoned this way, your dexterity is reduced by 1 point every round for 6 rounds, to a maximum of 6. You recover 2 points of dexterity per round you are not affected by this poison. He is respectful and polite to Naomi, but other she-devils rarely tolerate his presence. Batham, a duke who commands 30 companies of barbed devils. Sometimes called the Black Duke, for he usually wears jet black armor and a black cloak, he wields a black plus three mace, which dispels a variety of light spells upon contact with the affected area. He also carries a long bladed dagger of venom. He rides a nightmare into battle, and if summoned or bargained with, will reveal knowledge of the magical lore of gemstones, herbal lore, and low level magic user spells, for a high price of course. He always dresses in black and has black eyes, black hooves, and black nails. His skin, horns, and curly forked tail are a dead, fish belly white color. When angry, Batham hisses like a snake when he speaks. Gaziel, a duke who commands 11 companies of bone devils. He is the perfect general, cold, mechanical, and never forgetting any aspect of a battle or possible tactic. However, he never does anything he doesn't have to do and spends most of his time brooding. In combat, he spits acid with his forked tongue. Gaziel had a white, skull-like head with hollow eye sockets, a long purple-red forked tongue, and small, curled pink horns. His body was brown to blood-red in color and humanoid in form, with black hooves and hooked spurs on his elbows. His wrists and knees had bulbous, prominent joints. Gazra. In 2nd and 3rd edition, he is a pit fiend who rules the city of Bremok and oversees the armies of the first four layers of hell, making sure there's no corruption and that deserters and fleeting petitioners don't get far. Timful. In 4th edition, this is an archdevil who oversees weapon manufacturing in the volcano Tinfalus. Inhabitants. Phlegathos had many horn devils and barb devils that made up the bulk of its armies. In addition to those devils, it also contained a substantial amount of hellhounds, imps, and spine devils. Other than devils, the layer also had mephits constantly flitting about the reeking fins of the outlands of Phlegathos, acting as spies to whomever rewards them, and salamanders brought in from the elemental plane of fire to be bound in servitude to Belial. This didn't work out and most were slain, but a few salamanders escaped and currently survive by avoiding devils and feeding on any lone creature that wanders by. Locations Abrimok Abrimok is the only city in the fourth layer of hell. In 1st edition, Abrimok, also called the Mount of Leaping Flames, is located in a hollowed out shell of a dead volcano. It consists of several tiers of chambers that open up to the central shaft like balconies, and connected to each other via stairs, shafts, and a great spiral path that winds through the central shaft of the dead volcano. The lips of the volcano are topped with basalt towers. In 2nd edition, it is also located in a volcano, however it is not a dead one, but an active one, and it does erupt, albeit only occasionally. It is made out of cooled magma, obsidian, and crystal, and is ruled by the pit fiend Gazra, who commands a police force of 5,000 barbed devils from his castle of crystal statues. Intruders who arrive in Phlegathos unauthorized will be taken by the barbed devils and imprisoned in dungeons located beneath a Bremok.
In 3rd edition, a Bremok is constructed out of obsidian and other crystalline rock within an active volcano, and the streets run with molten lava. Travel on foot is impossible due to the massive stretches of magma. You must pay for passage on a scorched and dented gondola made of Baetorian green steel. Gazra still runs it and polices the first four layers of hell, just like in 2nd edition. However, in 3rd edition, his police force is mainly bone devils instead of barb devils. A Bremok hosted the diabolical courts where legal disputes were settled, and it was presided over by Shemaine, a Palerion. A Palerion was a type of devil only found in 3rd and 4th edition. It's basically a 20 foot tall, grotesque, fat woman with wings, and their whole thing was blackmailing mortals for their souls. Shemaine was known for being a stickler for detail and devouring advocates whose arguments seemed frivolous. In 3rd and 4th edition, the city is the center of weapons and arm trade in the Nine Hells. The ore for Baetorian green steel is drawn from its magma. In 5th edition, a Bremok is described as being a pleasure center for devils that are enjoying a respite from their duties. It has devilish equivalents of taverns, theaters, casinos, and other entertainments. It still hosts the diabolical courts, however in 5th edition, the city of Dis manufactures the Hell's weapons and armor and not a Bremok. The Pit of Flame In 2nd edition, the Pit of Flame is the most excruciating school of punishment in all of Beator. It is used to torture devils who break the laws of hell. It is a huge pit of boiling filth and excrement that projects pillars of white flames over a hundred feet high. The fire isn't normal fire, but some kind of energy drawn from the nature of hell itself, and it can harm devils. Bone devils, who find and punish devils who break the laws of hell, have the power to instantly teleport any ordinary devil except for pit fiends into the pit of flame. Some devils voluntarily enter it, for it is said that it can give strength and heal wounds to those who can endure it. Nine companies of horned devils guard the pit of flame to ensure no one is relieved until their designated time is up. In 3rd edition, the Pit of Flame serves the same purpose, but it is given a little more detail on how that's done. Inside the Column of White Flame, captive devils writhe inside iron balls that are suspended over the Lake of Filth. The ones who voluntarily enter to prove how tough they are revel ecstatically in the flames, but the rest sentenced to punishment scream in constant agony. A horned devil named Zamasir commands nine other horned devils and guards the pit of flame, making sure none escape and manhandling the more powerful devils into their cages of punishment. Bearded devils man the cantilevers that control the iron balls. Any creature immune to fire that is exposed to the white flames convulses in agony and cannot think or take any action other than escape. They must make a DC 35 will save. On a success, they can focus on their paint without screaming or showing any sign of torment. A creature that succeeds on this will gain a plus 4 to will saves for 9 days after being released. A creature that is not immune to fire suffers 9d8 plus 9 fire damage per round exposed. In 4th edition, it's just a lake of fire. There's no iron balls or poop-filled pit. It's just agonizing fire Asmodeus chains devils in as a form of punishment. It was created when Asmodeus overthrew the previous deity that ruled over Baetheon, the beautiful realm Beator used to be according to 4e lore. The god then cursed Asmodeus and his angels, and the place his army was encamped was engulfed in flames that submerged the faithless angels. In 5th edition, it doesn't mention the Pit of Flame. However, it does mention the process of promotion and demotion for devils, which I think is relevant here. Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes says that devils in line for promotion or demotion undergo a special ritual that makes them affected by the flames of Phlegathos, since usually they're immune to fire and they're not bothered by it. If they are being demoted, this inflicts horrible agony, and if they're being promoted, this brings them ecstatic joy. This is contradicted by the Monster Manual of 5th Edition, which says that the process of devil promotion is always painful no matter what. 5th Edition doesn't specifically mention the Pit of Flame, so this theoretically could happen anywhere in Phlegathos, but the description fits and it seems like a fitting place to be promoted, so I figured it was relevant to mention. Fierna's Palace Fierna's Palace is only mentioned in 3rd edition, where it is described as a snaking tower of crystalline stone wreathed in blue flames rising from a ring of sputtering magma pools. 
Inside lies elegant halls of marble, bejeweled decor, and a burning staircase that spirals into the earth to Fiona's pleasure domes, each one devoted to a separate vice. Grates in the floor lead to a warren of prison cells below. When Fiona grows bored, she can jab a lance through the grates, injuring a captive paladin or unicorn. Many of these cells are reserved for Fierna's ex-lovers, where her current paramours can see the fate that awaits them if they disappoint her. Shrivers So in 3rd edition, souls damned to hell arrive as soul shells, and are then transported to a torture station on the lair they belong to. There, they endure agonizing torture until they're stripped of all memories and willpower, and are nothing but a quivering husk. These are then transported to soul processing chambers to be turned into a lemur by a magical torture device called a shriver. All shrivers found in the Nine Hells are manufactured in a Bremok. A mortal who endures the agony of a shriver without crying out in pain can gain powerful abilities for each round they endured. Jealous Heart in 2nd edition, the divine realm of Inanna, the Mesopotamian goddess of war, love, and fertility, is Jealous Heart and is found in Phlegathos. In the Forgotten Realms, Inanna is a part of the Untheric pantheon. Jealous Heart was not as hot as the rest of the lair, and it is described as a field of crimson dust crisscrossed by rivers of blood that nourish the sweet fruits of the trees. Anyone who enters Jealous Heart succumbs to the fiery passion of love or war within a day. Its main city is called Eridan, a place where the lovers of the realm take defense against the warriors. Jealous Heart is only mentioned in 2nd edition. In 3rd edition, Inanna's home plane is the same as the rest of the Sumerian pantheon, Ziggoraxis, found in the first layer of Acheron, Avalis. Tenphalus, the Mouth of Iron In 4th edition, where Phlegathos manufactures the Hell's weapons and armor, this volcano is where lesser devils and Duragar forge the weapons used in the Blood War, and is watched over by the archdevil Temphal. And that is the lore of Phlegathos from all five editions of Dungeons & Dragons. I hope you enjoyed this video, and remember to subscribe to my channel if you want to see weekly Dungeons & Dragons videos.